there are like multifold actions of HZAC inhibition. Anti-inflammatory, antifibrotic, reverse remodeling, antiproliferative, and antithrombotic, as well as anti uh, pressure, that means pressure reduction. And that is relevant both for the systemic circulation, for example, valproic acid have shown antihypertensive properties, but it's also relevant for pulmonary arterial hypertension. Because the whole system is remodeled in cardiovascular disease, you can say, the in the heart, I've mentioned previously that you have fibrosis and, and hypertrophy, which has huge implications for heart failure and uh, atrial fibrillation. And it has huge implications in the periphery for systemic hypertension. So, I think that the, the, um, the anti-inflammatory, not uh, to mention the least, it's really important since people have thought of, for example, atherosclerosis as an inflammatory disease. But maybe the most important aspect of HDAC inhibition, and, and that's where all the interest for us started actually, is the antithrombotic effect. Because thrombosis, Think about it. I said that cardiovascular disease is, is the major killer in the world, but 80% of all cardiovascular complications are thrombotic. So anti-thrombotic effect is probably the, the most uh, important aspect of this. PH is a deadly disease and uh, PIH therapies have uh, de been developed during the last 20 years. Quite successfully improved prognosis from an average uh, survival of three years to around seven years for, for um, the patient. But all of the therapies, almost without exception, have been vasodilators, meaning that they have improved the pressure they have uh, decreased the burden on the right ventricle, but they have not really go to the core of the disease because pulmonary hypertension or pulmonary arterial hypertension is the correct term here because it starts in the arteries. The, the primary cause of pulmonary arterial hypertension is proliferation and remodeling fibrosis and epithelial growth in the vessels. It starts there, it's the primary. And that increases the pressure because of the resistance it causes. And the pressure burdens the right heart. And this is a evil circle going worse and worse and worse. And ultimately the right heart gives up. So these structural remodeling and structural changes in the vasculature of the lung, the primary cause of pulmonary arterial hypertension, is where you want your therapy to act. And current therapy, as I said, mainly dilates vessels and improves somewhat. But if you really want to, so to say, go to the, the essence or the core of the disease and maybe not cure it, but really have an impact on survival for this patient. You would like to see an agent that have this reverse remodeling, primary reverse remodeling of the vessels in the lung to reduce the pressure from a primary point of view which could go much further than just dilate the vessels. And then we talk about something that could be a disease-modifying therapy. And that has been our kind of thinking around 
giving HDAC inhibition as a treatment for PIH. We think that with the properties of an HDAC inhibitor, both being anti-proliferative, having reverse remodeling, being anti-inflammatory, having anti-fibrotic effects, and also anti-thrombotic effects shown in animal research, if that translates to man, which we have indications that it could do, that would be a future disease-modifying therapy of uh, PRH. And we are using, in, in this case, in a phase two trial, a valproic acid in a repurposed uh, formulation. But we're also developing new HDAC inhibitors to be used, maybe in PIH, but now we focus also on thrombosis. The key features of a disease-modifying therapy in PIH would be anti-inflammatory, anti-fibrotic, reverse vascular remodeling, pressure reduction, and anti-thrombotic.